In this video, we will discuss the pathological features of leomyoma and leomyosarcoma. So let's start with the leomyoma. The word leomyo means smooth muscles and word oma means benign tumor. So leomyomas can be defined as benign tumors arising from smooth muscle cells in myometrium of the uterus. You know that uterus is lined by three layers, endometrium, myometrium and perimetrium. And it is the myometrium that contains smooth muscle. So if these smooth muscles undergo neoplasia and become a benign tumor, this is leomyoma. Secondly, these leomyomas are also known as fibroids. So remember that fibroids are same as leomyomas. Then the most common benign tumors in the females are these leomyomas or fibroids and they affect one third to half of the women in reproductive age. So you can imagine how common they are if they are affecting one third to half of the population. And remember that these leomyomas happen during the reproductive age. I will tell you the reason in the later part. So let's discuss the pathogenesis of leomyomas. So leomyomas are caused by interaction between genetics and hormones. As far as the genetics is concerned, the common disturbances are rearrangements in chromosomes 6 and 12 and mutations in MED12. That is a gene that encodes a component of RNA polymerase transcription complex. So remember these two rearrangements in chromosome 6 and chromosome 12, mutations in MET12. These are just pain memorization. The second component of the pathogenesis is hormones. So in the hormones, estrogen is the hormone that favors the development of leomyomas. So you know that we discussed previously that, that leomyomas or fibroids occur in the reproductive age. Why they occur in the reproductive age? Now we have got the reason that these leomyomas are estrogen responsive. So you know that in the reproductive age, the quantity of estrogen is maximum. So correlating to this, these leomyomas usually develop in the reproductive age. After the reproductive age, the estrogen level falls and so does the risk of development of leomyomas or fibroids. In fact, most of the fibroids regress spontaneously after the menopause, after the reproductive life is over and there is lack of estrogen. The second thing that can cause this hormonal disturbance is oral contraceptive pills. These pills, especially if they contain estrogen and do not contain progesterone, then on that case, they will favor the development of leomyomas. Now let's discuss the morphology of leomyomas. As far as the gross features are concerned, they are well circumscribed gray white masses. Why they are well circumscribed? Obviously because they are benign tumors. So they have a clear boundary and they are gray white masses and they have a world cut surface. Why they are worlds? Because they are laid of multiple worlds of smooth muscles. I will discuss this in the microscopic features. You can then correlate with this. And there are three types of fibroids. Intramural, submucosal and subserosal. So let me explain this through a diagram. So if a leomyoma or fibroid is going within the wall of uterus, it is called intramural. However, if the leomyoma is extending into the submucosal layer, then these fibroids are called submucosal and sometimes they extend to the outer layers serosa of the uterus. These are called subserosal. Now what happens is that sometimes these subserosal fibroids are connected through a stalk and they can drive their blood supply from the adjacent organ. In that case, such subserosal fibroids are known as parasitic leomyomas. So they can in be intramural that is present in the walls, they can be submucosal present towards the inner side or subserosal present outwards and sometimes they extend through the stalk and can develop as parasitic leomyomas that can drive their blood supply from the adjacent areas. And as far as the microscopic features are concerned, they are very simple to remember. They are composed of worlds of smooth muscles. So there will be worlds of smooth muscles and there can be fibrosis and calcification. So inside here, you can see that there is somewhat eosinophilic fibrosis and sometimes the calcifications can also be there. So these are the microscopic features of leomyoma. And as far as the clinical features are concerned, most of the leomyomas or fibroids are asymptomatic. Sometimes they present as palpable pelvic masses. In other cases, they can cause abdominal pain because these myomas, because these leomyomas can be large and can cause pain. They can cause mass effects. Mass effects mean that they cause symptoms that are caused by the compression of adjacent areas. For example, if these fibroids are going large and they are compressing the ureter, they can cause disturbance in the urine. So they can cause mass effects and they can cause menorrhagia because they can because they are growing inside the uterus. So 
especially in the cases of submucosal fibroids, they can undergo bleeding resulting in menorrhagia or heavy menstrual bleeding. And the most important feature of the fibroids or leomyomas is infertility, which is a very unfortunate complication. Why does the infertility happen? You know that the fetus grows inside the uterus and these leomyomas are developing in the wall of uterus, thus interrupting with the development of fetus. So, they can cause infertility. Now let's discuss leomyosarcomas. Leomyo again means smooth muscle cells and sarcoma means malignant tumors. So they are the malignant tumors arising from the myometrium of the uterus and they develop from mesenchymal cells in the myometrium. So the mesenchymal cells present in the myometrium differentiate themselves into some abnormal cells. These are called leomyosarcomas and usually they are less differentiated as compared to their benign counterpart which is leomyomas. Another important point about leomyosarcomas is that they usually affect postmenopausal women. When we discuss leomyomas, we saw that these leomyomas develop in the women of reproductive age because they were estrogen dependent. But these, but these leomyosarcomas usually affect postmenopausal women. Now, let's discuss the morphology. As far as the gross features are concerned, these leomyosarcomas appear as soft, hemorrhagic, and necrotic masses. Remember that leomyomas were well circumscribed, but these leomyosarcomas can show areas of hemorrhage and necrosis. For microscopic features, the keyword to remember is leomyosarcoma. So the name is self-explanatory. Leomyo means tumor cells resembling the smooth muscle cells, and sometimes undifferentiated tumors can appear as anaplastic cells that do not resemble smooth cell muscle cells at all. So remember that the tumor cells can be smooth muscle-like or they can be undifferentiated. And as far as, as the sarcoma is concerned, we know that this word means malignant soft tissue tumor. So you will see three features. These three features are cardinal features of leomyosarcoma that differentiate it from benign tumor leomyoma. These three features are cytological atypia, which means development of atypical cells, mitotic activity. So these leomyosarcomas are aggressive and more growing tumors so they can show more mitotic activity. And as these tumors are growing fast, so resultantly they are dying fast too. So you will see areas of tumor necrosis. So remember these three features that are present in leomyosarcoma, differentiating them from leomyomas, cytological atypia, mitotic activity and tumor necrosis. So this is all about leomyomas and leomyosarcomas.